Good afternoon, ladies. Hello. Seems like I'm missing a couple of buttons. I was trying to. So for everyone who's joining us, um, Jessica and I are relatively new to this technology, as are many people. Um, I'm hoping that you all can hear um, the settings that I put on for all of our participants uh, was basically to mute all of you and you would have to manually show yourself so that what oh. and I are seeing right now as co-hosts are your names. Um, but you would have to manually show yourself uh, or, you know, if you, when Jessica gets started, she may ask people to um, just say hello. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just introduce the event and then turn it over to Jessica. Um, and hopefully everybody who wants to participate today uh, is able to do that. So uh, my name is Lisa Kelly and I am uh, the board president of Mental Health Awareness of Michigan. And our event today, Emotional Well-Being uh, During Isolation, uh, is one of our public education events. And we're so delighted that Jessica uh, has agreed to do the presentation today. Jessica is a board member as well, and she has her bachelor's in social work and is working on her master's degree in social work with a uh, focus on mental health and addictions. Um, I will come back on at the end uh, uh, just to close things out, uh, but I do want to invite all of you to complete an evaluation. I will send a link, an email link to each of you at the end of the event. And you know we value your feedback and as an incentive to complete the evaluation, we do have a $25 gift card that we'll give anybody who completes, or, You'll, your name will go into a drawing to, uh, for an opportunity to win a $25 gift card to Meyer. So um, I'm going to turn things over to Jessica. And um, thank you so much, Jessica, for, for talking to us today. Um, yeah, no problem. So I did notice as we were all coming in that there's a lag on Zoom. Um, it's pretty common these days because a lot of people are on it. So um, you should be able to see the participants that are on if you only see a couple of them. I'm sorry, it'll just take a while for them to come on. Uh, the group chat is an available option. It's at the bottom of your screen, so you could always chat. Um, you can send a private message or you can send it to everybody um, so that we can all see your questions. I will try to the best of my ability to answer them. There will be a couple of um, questions on here that will that'll prompt just kind of a conversation amongst everybody. Um, and uh, we are going to introduce a small four question poll right now um, that Kelly's going to, uh, Lisa's going to send uh, to everybody. Um, if you could just please take a minute to answer. I just want to gauge what you know on, about mental health right now. Can everybody see the pretest? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. <clears throat> Lisa, I have access to any have you uh, and answered. So once we get to 100%, let me know, and then I can move forward with the presentation. Sure. But I don't see any way to actually show our faces. Um, are you saying like on the, to put your video on? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, there should be three dots up by your name at the top part. Um, and there should be uh, an option that says start video. Let me know if that works for you. If not, there's another option if you move your mouse down to the bottom section where all the menu options are. There is also a little camera. There should be a little up arrow that should also give you an option to start video. We're at 80% with the poll. Sure. 
Okay, I'm going to give people 10 more seconds to finish the poll and then we will move on. Okay, I think I'm, right. I'm going to go ahead and end the polling so you can go ahead and get started. All right. Well, thank you everybody for answering those questions. Um, at the end, you, you are going to get a post-test, same four questions, um, just to view um, what you've learned out of this presentation. So I'll start sharing my screen. Um, Lisa, can you make sure to enable uh, the screen sharing? Okay. And... Sorry, hold on. Yep, no problem. Do you see it? Yes. Okay, great. All right, so can everybody see the presentation now? Yep. Yes. All right. Yes. Perfect. So today's topic is about being during isolation. Like Lisa said, my name is Jessica Lawson. Um, I have some experience uh, with mental health, but I wanted to do this also in a bubble um, just because I feel like we need a place to communicate about what we are going through um, and what we could do to help one another. So um, I'll start with that. Uh, this is sponsored by Mental Health Awareness of Michiana, um, and our goal at Mental Health Awareness of Michiana is to break stigma and raise awareness and spread education regarding mental health disorders. Um, you can find more about them at the following links. Um, this presentation sh uh, will be sent out as well, so you'll have access to all of this information and resources at the end of this presentation. Can you still hear me? It seems like it's... Yes, we can hear you. Can, all right. So it seems like it paused my presentation. I'm just going to pull it back up really quickly. And if Zoom keeps giving us more problems, uh, don't worry, we will come right back to it. All right, can everybody see the presentation? No. No. Okay, let me see. Not sure why it's not letting me on. I'm gonna I'm gonna restart this program really quick so that I can make sure that everybody has set what I see. Okay. Can everybody see it now? Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right, sorry, it seems that Zoom is having some difficulties today. Cool. The uh, presentation today will consist on mental health and mental illnesses, kind of defining what those mean, um, our current environmental effects on mental health, understanding what COVID-19 is, the mental health risks that come with uh, isolation, who are the vulnerable populations, some coping strategies, um, we're gonna have information for parents as well, what to look out for in our young ones, and then available resources. And in the end, I'm gonna give you a tool for mental health screening. So in case you or anybody you work with um, could use this tool, it's completely free. All right, so um, current environmental effects. So mental illness produces some of the most challenging health problems faced by the society, accounting for vast numbers of hospitalization, disabilities, and it results in billions of lost revenue, productivity, um, 
it, it also has a lot to do with sharply elevated risk of suicide. And scientists have long known that these potential devastating conditions arise from a combination of genes and environmental factors. So some of the examples that I could say are, for example, we've all heard about the winter blues, um, but we've also probably observed in our household, um, maybe some fighting, some depression, you know, just spontaneous uh, tearfulness or something like that. So our environment severely affects uh, what it goes on with us, our mood, behavior, and mental health. Um, So understanding what COVID-19 is, it's also known as coronavirus. I'm sure you all have heard a lot about this um, virus. It's a respiratory illness that can spread from, uh, from person to person. The symptoms include fever, cough, and shortness of breath. The complications from this illness include pneumonia, multi-organ failure, and in some cases, death. Um, there is currently no vaccine or specific treatment to treat this illness, but there is a plus side uh, out of 10 people that get it, nine will survive from this disease. So there's a high probability of survival if you are infected by this disease. Um, being that it is a, no, a, no, a novel illness, countries have resulted to social isolation. And social isolation can be defined structurally as the absence of social interaction or contact uh, with family, friends, neighbors at an independent level and with society at large at a broader level. Um, what arises from this isolation? There are several mental health risks um, such as stress. Uh, so stress during an infectious disease outbreak can include fear or worry about um, your health, your finances, uh, your employment, perhaps right now you're not working and you're unsure about what's going to happen in the future. Um, also the instability and not knowing what's going to come, it can also uh, cause anxiety in people. Um, it could also cause changes in your sleep and eating patterns which also increases anxiety. Um, there might be difficulty sleeping or concentrating on anything that you need to do. So maybe some of you are working from home but you're having a really hard time focusing um, or concentrating on what you're working on, that's a sign of anxiety. And then it could also lead to worsening of chronic health, uh, whether it be physical or mental. With anxiety, so anxiety is the most common mental um, illness in the U.S. Um, and again, you could be anxious about being infected or a loved one getting this illness. Uh, and also, Anxiety feeds anxiety, so you might see a lot of anxious people around you, uh, maybe your family members, or in social media, people are sharing about all their feelings of anxiety and depression. Sometimes we could take that on um, ourselves as well. And Mental Health Awareness of America, actually Mental Health America shared that thir there's been a 31% increase on clinical anxiety screening on their website. Um, so there are a lot of people concerned about anxiety right now. Another one is depression. So not surprisingly, we've also observed an increase in depression. About 16 million suffer from major depressive disorder in the U.S. daily, and nearly half of those diagnosed with depression also have anxiety disorder. So the social isolation and loneliness significantly increase the risk of um, depression, and even premature death. Um, and then the last one is addictions. So in regards to addictions, social isolation is sobriety's worst enemy because there is easy access, there's less accountability to others, and less fear of social stigma. Um, there are, it might be a coping mechanism to deal with the isolation and loneliness. Um, it also might be coping mechanism to deal with stress and anxiety. And also people are very bored right now, so they might be tempted to do something that they weren't uh, tempted to do in the past. So, and that's how it affects addictions as well. The, there are a lot of vulnerable populations, um, but these are specific ones that I found in the literature, um, which is the elderly, children and teens, individuals with physical health complications, 
individuals with history on current men mental health disorders, people who are helping in the response to the coronavirus, like doctors, other healthcare providers, and first responders, and people who are isolated alone, uh, so no family with them, uh, minorities, and women as well. So um, both depression and anxiety are more prevalent in women. So I just want to get input from everybody that's here. Um, what are other mental health risks that you can think of? You could either put them in the chat or you can verbally say them through the audio. It's up to you. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. Sorry, when I'm sharing my screen, it's hard to see anything else. <laughs> so I'm not hearing anybody and I don't see the chat box. Lisa, do you see anybody in the chat box? I don't know if it's different for you than me. Yeah, some stuff in the chat box from eating disorder to domestic violence, sleep deprivation, and abuse. Yeah, those are all great examples. Um, unfortunately, there has been a rise on all of those issues as well. Uh, others are PTSD. Um, and then there are some little ones like um, your sleeping patterns may have changed, so maybe you're going to bed later at night not getting the recommended amount of sleep and then eating disorders and these is this is in both spectrums so under eating uh, maybe you're just not hungry because you're a little sad depressed or you're overeating because there's nothing else that you think of to do um, i know that i'm overeating um, because i'm visiting the fridge every hour and a half whenever you know i'm done with these meetings so a lot of us could be guilty of that um, yeah, for some reason, it's not allowing me to view the chat box right now. So if you um, have something to share and you want to share it via audio, that'd be great. Can you hear me, Jessica? Yes, I can. Okay, so the other thing that uh, was mentioned in the chat box is concern about security, uh, fear of gangs and break-ins, and uh, child neglect due to stress and probably child abuse uh, it, because of the increased stress level. Of course. So I'm a parent of three and it's not easy um, with all the extra responsibilities that we have going on as well. We have to um, homeschool in many cases. We have to deal with house chores every day, <clears throat> which seem to pile up even quicker now that everybody's home. So mm -hmm. I can definitely relate to the additional stress at home, uh, especially mm -hmm. if there's children. Mm -hmm. um, luckily, um, many of us are aware of um, different coping skills to deal with the stress, but a lot of parents don't have that luxury. So I think it's our civic duty to kind of share the information about that, whether it be in social platforms or anything like that, but sharing, you know, take a walk or count to 10, um, those little things that we tell kids to do when they feel stressed out and anxious, that all works for adults as well. Um, I know I have a 10 year old, a six-year-old and a seven-month-old. So I'm dealing with a lot of different stages, a lot of different attitudes. So sometimes for me, it's just taking the baby and going on a walk. Oh. <clears throat> and that really helps me. Um, and sorry, my voice is going away. I had a tooth extracted yesterday, and, <laughs> and so it hasn't been fun. <laughs> um, but those are I mean, those are good mental health risks, um, ideas that you guys have come up with. Unfortunately, they do happen. They are prevalent. Um, and it's important just to be aware about that. Also, it's important for us to recognize our triggers. Um, sometimes I catch myself yelling orders to my kids, to my husband, and then I realize, okay, calm down. They're in the same situation that you're in. Um, so kind of knowing what triggers you. For me, it's seeing a lot of laundry. Um, so I try to my best to stay on top of it because uh, otherwise everybody else is going to care about it in the home. <laughs> and then 
Uh, Jessica, the other thing that uh, I think is increasingly problematic are financial concerns. Of course. Uh, and the fact that, you know, uh, there's a difficult time, people are having a difficult time getting adequate amount of food and personal protection, uh, things as simple as, you know, disinfectant wipes or hand sanitizer, you just can't find those things in the grocery stores or even some basic food items are, are sold out. Right, and that might be something that adds on to your stress and anxiety, just knowing that you're not really well protected. There are a lot of people that are struggling financially. Um, there are a lot of families, a lot of families in America that don't have any kind of savings accounts, and we're going, what, week three, four now into this isolation. Days are starting to blur. Um, so I know a lot of families are tapped out, uh, especially at the end of the month, beginning of the month. You have to pay rent, mortgage, whatever it is they have to pay. So there are additional stressors going on in people's lives. There is a very realistic fear of that crime might get worse, um, but what can we do about it? We'll talk more about that in the coping strategies, but one thing is, you know, focus on what you can change and what you could do, and don't get in your head about what's going on outside too much because there's only very little that we can do. Um, so if you're concerned about your family's safety, I mean, there are precautions that you could take, whether that be adding a, uh, another lock to your door, or, you know, making sure that all your windows are secured. You know, there are different little things that you can do, but one of the big things about um, coping with everything that is going on is just don't get in your head too much about everything that is out of your control and just focus on what you can change, what you can do to make your situation a little better. So. As far as finances go, I know that um, there's financial aid coming from the government. I know that it's not a lot for many people. Um, I myself would rather be at work uh, and making money, so I totally understand that as well. But at least that'll help to alleviate some. Um, it is important to be resourceful, so knowing where you can uh, seek help financially with food or shelter is important and I'll talk more about that at the resources part of this presentation as well. Is there anything else on there Lisa that I missed at the on the chat? I think you're good. All right so we already mentioned some of the coping strategies um, but others that exist are taking breaks from watching tv reading or listening uh, to news stories including social media so hearing about the pandemic repeatedly can be upsetting um, and cause extra stress on the body and anxiety and for most of us it can be a little depressing take care of your body so um I confess, I do overeat a lot, but I try to make sure that we get out at least once a day. The weather was getting better. I just looked outside and it doesn't seem like good walking weather, but you know, doing different things to help take care of your body, whether it be get on a treadmill or, you know, just do a couple crunches or something, but take care physically of your body. Um, also take deep breaths, stretch and meditate. Um, something that my husband told me is, you know, the mess is going to be there the next day and the next day after that. And that was kind of an eye opener for me. I'm investing too much time in trying to have the house tidy. It's okay to take a day or two to just not do anything and relax and just watch a movie with the family um, and try to make the most of the situation. I'm finding things out about my kids that I hadn't learned before and I thought I was a very involved parent. So I'm trying to take the positive as it comes. Um, try to eat healthy, well-balanced meals. So that might be uh, making sure that you're buying or purchasing healthier snacks, uh, whether that be fruit, um, yogurt, something like that, so that you're not tempted to go for the chips uh, or anything that's unhealthy. Again, exercise regularly, get plenty of sleep. So sleep is important, um, especially if you have children. Right now, you might be tempted to be like, it's okay, you can go to bed later than your normal sleep routine, but it can have drastic effects on your child, especially uh, as they start school back up in the next year or maybe in the summer. I don't know what's gonna happen, but um, getting them out of their routine would cause a drastic change to their you know, mental health. So if you can stick to bedtime routines, that would be great. Um, and allow them to sleep in every once in a while. Research has shown that kids actually do better if they get to sleep in a little bit. Um, so if you're homeschooling, 
I would recommend you start a start time of 9, 9.30 and not 8.30 or anything earlier than that. Um, avoid alcohol and drugs. And that might be just as easy as getting rid of what you, the temptation of your home. Um, so, I mean, we all have, or maybe all of us, I'm not, I shouldn't say that, but some of us might have a, a bottle of wine at, in the household. Um, and, you know, it might just be taking that out of the home just so that you're not tempted to drink um, if you're dealing with any of those issues. Um, make time to unwind. Try to do something other um, activities that you enjoy. So in my family, we've taken up a lot of art and none of us are experts here, but we are drawing kind of what we feel. Um, my daughter's homeschooling is only remote school for three days. The other two days I have her do stuff that includes the arts. So whether it be drawing, painting, um, doing chalk all over the sidewalk, and then the other day we do some music lessons. So anything with art is great for the uh, mental health. And um, connect with others. So talk with people that you trust about your concerns and how you're feeling. Don't be ashamed to talk to people freely about what you're feeling right now because most likely they are feeling the same, uh, but they just don't want to open up 100%. So uh, don't feel shy about sharing your concerns. Other coping strategies. I know that I just said stay off of the news and that is important, but it is also important to stay informed about what really is going on and don't believe all the rumors. So don't buy in everything that is shared in social media. Make sure that you make time to do some research and stay informed. Uh, limit the screen time. Um, that's for you and your children. It is important that they're not watching TV all day and just sitting because, again, that could increase depression, anxiety, and stress in children, um, and it could also affect their concentration. Um, draw strength from your support group or spiritual life. So if you are somebody that's religious, it is very important that you draw strength from people, um, your family, your friends, and your spiritual life to help you get through this. Um, also focus on positive thoughts. I know it's hard to get the negative and all the things that we're anxious out of our head. Um, again, talking about bills, talking about schooling, work schedules, um, you know, are you, when all this is over, are you going to immediately jump back to your activities or are you going to take it slow just to make sure that everything's gone? Um, I know it's hard to take all those thoughts out of our head, especially because we have a lot more free time to think on those uh, negative thoughts, but it is important to focus on the positive. So like I said, I take every day uh, as a new opportunity to learn more about my loved ones. I am doing a lot of FaceTiming with friends that I hadn't FaceTime in a long time. So we're catching up. Um, I have had virtual game nights with family. So um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with Villainous, but it's a Disney uh, game board game. And we have played with different family members who also own the game and we've played virtually with them. Um, Bingo is an easy one that you can do virtually, but um, there are things that you can do to stay connected. Uh, again, I put this on there again, focus on things that you can change and not on things that you can't. There are so many things that are out of our control right now. If we focus on that, we are going to be overwhelmed with feelings of stress and anxiety. We just need to focus on what we can do to change. So if you are worried about being financially uh, tight and, and it might be helpful to create a budget and stick to that budget especially with the new income that you have coming in or limited income that you have coming in. So, and then speaking about it with your whole family so they're all aware about why the changes need to be made and where you can make some cuts so that everybody is aware of what is going on. Um, if to, to the certain extent that they're age appropriate, you wouldn't have that conversation with younger kids, but maybe with some preteens, teens, you might have that conversation of, okay, we're going to have to cancel a certain uh, subscription or something like that just because it's not in the budget right now and so it's important to be open about that too. Um, it's important to also prioritize and set daily attainable goals. So uh, right now with all of the free time that uh, many of us have, some don't, but many of us have, it's important to set um, little 
daily goals that you want to accomplish. Um, so something that I've always wanted to do was learn a third language. So I've made it a small attainable goal to do 20 minutes of Duolingo just to learn French. And I started it two weeks ago. Last week, my daughter joined me. So now we're in like a competition <laughs> to who can learn the most French by the end. This is all over. Again, something fun that we just are doing to cope with everything that is going on. Um, and here's where I wrote about create a financial plan or budget to support your current lifestyle. That's very important. And again, never hesitate to ask for help from your loved ones, friends, professionally, whatever you need to do to help you um, get through this hard times. So um, I want to know from you, what are other coping skills that you could think of? And again, you could write it on the chat or verbalize it through your audio. And then I'll have Lisa read some of the ones that are on the chat since I can't do that. So while people are writing uh, in the chat box, there was a question that came in that I'm wondering if you can address which is if you're living with somebody who is overly anxious or has an anxiety disorder, um, what can you do uh, as their support person uh, or parent, you know, to help them during this time? Yeah, so learning about the different coping skills, you're going to know your loved one better than anybody. So what's something that they might enjoy doing to help take their mind off of everything that is going on? Um, so maybe they like to draw, maybe they like to read, uh, making sure that you're making time to encourage them to do those things to help them with that anxiety. But another part too is that if somebody is overly anxious and you've tried everything and you just can't help them, the, you're probably getting pretty anxious too. So they're probably taking on what your body language is saying. It's important for you to recognize, okay, this is becoming a little overwhelming for me. I need to take a break and just either go to this next room or take a walk yourself to get yourself to calm down, to come back and tackle that issue with your loved one. Um, because if you're getting overly anxious, you're not gonna help the situation um, out anymore. Is there anything else, Lisa? Uh, so some suggestions for other coping strategies, uh, cooking yoga, journaling, playing an instrument, yard work, gardening, uh, menu planning, figuring out what can be saved for the next meal, uh, perfect time to try new things. So really, you know, having a, a project that you wouldn't normally have time to do, uh, mm -hmm. this may be a really good time to be taking up some things or focusing time on things that, you know, typically you wouldn't have time to do. Yeah, those are all great ideas. I mean, husband and I were talking the other day about what we miss about going out to eat, and I love fried pickles, and it just so happens that I got recipe, and he, luckily he's a good cook, <laughs> where I'm going to allow him to make some fried pickles how I like them, but that's a good suggestion, you know, taking up new things, uh, talking about the things that you miss, and if you can, that'd be a fun little thing to, activity to do. Um, I know another thing that I miss are the rolls from Texas um, Roadhouse and the cinnamon butter, and we did those two days ago, and it wasn't 100%, but we're going to keep practicing. So those are all great suggestions. Mm -hmm. The other thing, Jessica, is uh, the importance of getting some physical exercise and uh, getting outside the house, even as you're practicing social distancing. Yeah, so research shows that 10 minutes of a day can improve mental health disorders greatly and reduce the risk of suicide by like 70% or something like that. It's really high. I can't remember the exact um, uh, percentage, but physical exercise is so important. So whatever it looks like for you, like I said, for me, it's just walking outside around the neighborhood for a couple minutes. Um, and then I alternate the family members that I take because they don't like to do physical exercise, but I think it's important. So I take my daughter one day, my son the next day, um, and, and do it that way. But yeah, encouraging physical activity for you and your loved ones is important. Is there anything else, Lisa, that I need to address? 
Uh, looking here at the last couple of comments, a uh, perfect time to try new things. Mm -hmm. Moderation with technology for sure. Mm -hmm. um, give ourselves uh, a break um, or forgive ourselves, you know, as we're all transitioning, you know, with all the changes that are going on. Take a breath. That's right. So none of us are experienced in what is going on right now. And I mean, uh, has in our lifetime. So it's a learning experience for everybody. But what I think is very important is also being honest. And if you had a bad day and you lost it on your children or your spouse, just being honest the next day and saying, look, I'm so sorry that we, it's the isolation that's starting to creep in, you know, all these different affecting my mental health because only then are you going to receive that support and that openness from members as well so if I'm honest and open I'm feeling I know that my husband and my kids are going to you know this um, welcome to join uh, on feel as well thank you everybody for sharing those suggestions I'll move on if there's not anything else on the chat nope not seeing anything else oh, okay so here's some information for parents. Um, this is on beha uh, behaviors that you might see in your children. Uh, not all children and teens respond to stress in the same way. Some common changes um, to watch include excessive crying or in younger children, returning to behaviors that they have upgrown. So for example, they might have toileting accidents, bedwetting, excessive worry or sadness, they might have unhealthy eating or sleeping habits, irritability or acting out behaviors in teens, difficulty with attention and concentration, avoidance of activities they've enjoyed in the past, unexplained headaches, pain, and they might be using all tobacco or drugs. Um, so these are things that you need to keep an eye out as they are also coping with all this isolation. And ways that you can support your children through all this is talk to children, child or teen about COVID-19 outbreak, answer questions and share facts about the coronavirus in a way that your child or teen can understand. So making sure that you're using words that are appropriate for your child and if they're younger kids, uh, maybe not sharing the very scary parts about the virus, but sharing why it is important that you are home safe and healthy. And word and phrase your statements in a positive uh, light. So, for example, we stay home and be safe instead of we have to stay home um, and away from our friends. So, uh, framing positively and for kids. So, reassure your child or teen that they are. Um, let them know that it's a okay, uh, feel upset. Share with how you deal with your own stress so that they can learn how to uh, cope from you and limit your family's exposure to the news coverage of the event, including social media. Children may misinterpret what they hear or can be frightened of what they do not understand. Also, as many of you know, a lot of misinformation gets shared in social media pages, um, and a lot of kids don't have the cognitive uh, comprehension skills that we do to kind of be able to rule out what's fake and what's probably true. Um, try to keep up Daily routines. If schools are closed, create a schedule for learning activities and relaxing or fun activities. So that is something that was important to me as well as physical exercise um, because I admit, although I enjoy going out for walks and running, I do have to talk myself into it. But what happened is I asked my daughter, you know, what days do you have gym at school? And when she told me that days, I'm sure that each of those days that she's physically active and I, you know, I just say, you would have had gym instead of this right now in case she ever, you know, complains. So um, she's good with that. And be a role model, make plenty of sleep, exercise and eat well, and connect with your friends and family. That's a huge one are observing everything that you're doing so if they see that you are pressed angry shouting crying everything that you do they will also reflect and do themselves so that's an important one so some available resources um, to help with mental disorder 
here and uh, everything that's going on with isolation are America. They have a national website where you can go on there and learn more about all of these mental health disorders. Mayo Clinic, um, there's different websites that I listed on here, all of which I took a lot of the information from this uh, PowerPoint, so you can access them there. There is another one, stjocares.org. They have my strengths um, assessment. It is the third one from the bottom where you can and it health, you know, resource for you. The last, the second to the bottom is also South Bend, Indiana, coronavirus resources and support. So there's a list of a lot of things that you go in there and find out. And then also, if you need help actually with food, shelter, etc., you can call 211 and they'll be able to point you in the right direction with resources. 211 has now two uh, designated lines that's related to everything with coronavirus. So if you're ill and don't know if you should go get tested or anything like that or something coronavirus related, they'll point you in that direction. Uh, but if yours is just trying to find resources for yourself or somebody that you love, you can uh, also call them and get some help. Um, financial resources I hear are a little tight right now. Um, locally, there are still some uh, assistance that you can get to help you out through this time. And then last, I want to share again, uh, Mental Health Awareness of Michigan is affiliated with Mental Health America. They offer free uh, screenings, uh, mental health screening, all types of health screenings. Um, this are the only ones that I could screenshot and fit in my screen, but this is just to give you an example. They have depression tests, anxiety tests, disorder tests, PTSD tests. So if you feel that you or a loved one might be having issues, you could always go to this website and get those free screenings um, so that you can uh, seek help after that. So we'll give you a read as well. Mental Health America, like I said on the page, also has a huge list of national resources for mental health disorders as well. Does anybody have questions about this presentation? Comments, concerns, feel free to share an audio or in chat. I'll have Lisa share with me. Um, I have a question. Yeah. After someone does a test like this, what, I mean, and say for instance, they find out they have some depression or some PTSD, then what? So they can choose what route they want to take. They could uh, choose to talk to a primary care physician or seek counseling at a different agency. There are resources on that website to uh, help you um, if you, you know, it depends on kind of what you want to do. The resources if you have insurance or Medicaid, but you can call and um, get resources for the next steps. Okay. So, Teresa, yep. mm -hmm. the, um, if you take one of the tests, it'll lead you, you know, to a series of options. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are a fair number of people who will take one of these tests and basically they're just kind of curious where they're scoring on things. Uh -huh. uh, if you want additional written information or additional kind of internet resources, then they will lead you, they'll prompt you to basically additional, um, you know, written information. Uh, if you want to be connected to a provider, mm -hmm. a mechanism in place to try to refer back to the local communities. Okay, just wondering, and thank you. And yeah. if you, if anybody has trouble, if they take the test, they want access or referrals, and you run into some barriers, please email us, and uh, we will see what we can do to help connect you as well. Okay. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me check the chat box. Uh, so Derek Patty. Uh, said, we have recently published a community resource guide uh, that he can speak to. So, Derek, can you unmute yourself and uh, share what, what information you have? Hello, everyone. My name is Derek, and I am a counselor at IUSB at the Student Counseling Center. And we've recently published a community resource guide for Elkhart Goshen uh, in the St. Joseph County, which gives a lot 
of information about food banks, um, hospitals, mental health centers for uh, different mental health issues. Um, we usually refer if we have like outsourcing that we need to do to HealthLink. They offer a sliding scale fee um, for clients. And then we would refer to like Oakland. And if it was something serious, then it would be Epworth. Derek, can you speak to um, how would somebody access that community guide? Like what, is there a web address that people should go to? Sure. We um, have a website, just IUSB, and you can get on there. And it's located um, under the housing section, as well as the student affairs section. Um, and then there's information about resources. We're working on mindfulness and um, relaxation, um, like coping skills for people. And that'll be on the Student Counseling Center website soon. And you don't have to be a student at IUSB to access that? Nope. Anyone can access it. It's for the community. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. That's important for everybody. Uh, Daryl, what's the name of the uh, the item or the resource? It's just, it's just a community resource guide. Like if you go under the housing section, it, it should be um, just like a web attachment that you can just click on, and you'll have the the um, the full catalog. It's about twenty five pages. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Jessica, somebody was asking uh, whether we could see each other. And um, I don't know that we can open up uh, after when you're done with your presentation. Uh, I'm wondering if that'll allow us to go into the gallery view. Okay, not sure. Jessica? Okay, so I don't know if uh, what's happened that Jessica uh, is not sure what happened there. Um, okay, so I, I'm not sure where Jessica went. Um, oh my God log back on. We do have a poll. Uh, if Jessica logs back on, she can wrap up her presentation. But before everybody um, starts, oh, so Jessica just sent me a text message that she froze and hopefully she'll log back in. Um, we do have the post-test poll um, and I also want to let you know, I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. And if you can go ahead and uh, do the post test again. And what I will be sending out to everybody, this is Lisa speaking, what I'll be sending out is the evaluation for today's session and uh, the resource list as well as Jessica's presentation. So um, the list of resources, the coping strategies, everything that she went over is in her PowerPoint presentation and she's, uh, we're gonna attach that to the uh, link, the email that has the link for the evaluation. Um, we value, value your feedback. Uh, one of MHAM's goals is to continue to provide um, uh, mental health education in the community uh, in the Michigan region and um, you know this is one of hopefully we'll be able to do more online and in-person um, events throughout 2020. So if you have any ideas of topics that you want us to cover please you know include that on the evaluation form and uh, by completing the evaluation today, you are going to be thrown into um, a hat. Your name will be thrown into a hat to receive a $25 Meyer gift card. So um, I will reach out to whomever's name, whoever's email we pull out of the hat uh, to let you know that you've won. So um, not sure if we're going to get uh, Jessica back. Um, we are really appreciative of her time in putting this uh, together and we hope it was valuable uh, to each of you.
Um, I, we've got looking here at Jessica's email to me or text message to me. Okay. So that was the end of her presentation. She said she's going to try to log back on. Um, if you have your video, uh, um, an opportunity to, sh to show us who you are, um, I think, but I see hands that are raised. Let me see if I can. Um, I don't know. What am I seeing? <laughs> can you see? Can people see each other now? I don't, I don't want to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who wants to be seen, uh, you might want to go down to your video prompt and make sure that it says uh, that it's allowing you to show video. Uh, so Kendra is asking a question about uh, what can be sent out to the elderly. Um, that's a great question. Uh, I don't have any resources. I'm wondering if anybody else in this group has any resources they would like to share uh, specific to the elderly, because I, I do think that you're right, Kendra, that, you know, those folks are probably going to be in isolation a lot longer um, than people who are younger and people who are healthy. So it's a great idea to be thinking about how do we uh, reach out to the elderly. Um, so I don't, I don't know if anybody else has any ideas uh, for, I, I don't know if Real Services um, has anything in particular. Okay. Um, looking to see here if there are any other questions. Um, if you're, okay. So if you haven't vote, if you haven't done the post test, I uh, would love for you to do that before you log off. Um, oh, there's Jessica. Jessica, can you speak or say goodbye? Sorry about that. It like wouldn't let me back on. It said that Zoom was unavailable and then it allowed me to do it, so. Okay. Uh, Jen Carter uh, did say that she thinks Real Services is able to do a home check on an elderly person. Um, so that's great to know that. Um, I don't know of anybody else who's doing outreach to the elderly. Yeah, if you call to have those resources, um, I know that Real Services is doing it, but I know that there are some churches that also put um, 2 one more information on them. Okay. Okay. So, yes, I told the folks about the evaluation uh, that I'll be sending the link to as soon as we're done here. Uh, is there anything else uh, that you have to, that you want to say? No, just thank you for logging in today. Thank you for your patience with this technology. And thank you, I guess that's all. Okay, uh, now Jessica will be doing this in two weeks in Spanish, so if there's anybody who's on right now who, um, you know, uh, knows of an organization who you think that we should be advertising uh, this with, we're really grateful that the Public Library, St. Joseph Public Library, advertised the event today. Um, but for the event two weeks from now in Spanish, if there's anybody um, who wants to contact us by email, uh, we'll be setting up the registration for that uh, probably in the next couple of days. Okay, Council of, on Aging is the other organization that people are recommending for the elderly. Okay, uh, yes, and for sure we'll let La Casa de, uh, de Amistad know about the Spanish language uh, session. Okay, thank you so much, everyone, and thank you for participating, and please fill in the, um, the uh, evaluation form uh, after we send it out. All right, stay well. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right.